Hello everyone and welcome back to Fun with Fitzy. This is 9.5 still, part two. We're going to talk about straight line depreciation. Straight line depreciation is one of the easiest ways to estimate. When we say estimate depreciation, remember it's because we don't know how long the asset's going to last for, so we have to estimate how long we think it's going to last for. The straight line method of depreciation divides up the cost, the net cost, of the asset equally. That's why we say straight line. If you were to graph it and have expenses and time over here, it's going to be the same. It's a straight line. So there's a formula here I need you to remember. Straight line depreciation expense. Okay, so this is really depreciation expense. Equals cost minus salvage value divided by the estimated number of years in the life of the asset. I call this useful life. So I say cost minus salvage value divided by useful life. Sometimes we call salvage value residual value. What is that? Well, it's how much you expect to get if you sold this asset at the end of its useful life. So here's an example. You purchase a truck for $78,000 on January 1st. Always take the date into account because in some cases, if it's not at the very beginning of the year, which you never buy all your assets at the beginning of the year, we need to do something called prorate. We'll get to that in a little while, but stay here with me now. January 1st, we've had this asset for the whole year. We do not need to prorate. It's estimated that the truck will be used for six years. So there's our useful life. So here's our cost. Here's our useful life. And at the end of that time, it could be sold. So here's our salvage value for $78,000. I have the three variables that I need for my equation. What is the annual depreciation? In other words, what is the depreciation expense each year? Well, remember our formula is cost minus salvage value divided by estimated number of years in the life of the asset, or I call it useful life. We're going to take our $78,000, put it in cost. We're going to take our residual value, put it there, or our salvage value, and we're going to put our useful life there. Pretty simple. So our depreciation expense every year is $11,700. What would the journal entry be then? So on December 31st, remember this is an adjusting entry. We would have Depreciation expense, 11700 And that's going to be for automobile or truck. And then we're going to have our credit accumulated depreciation truck for the same amount. That's our credit. That's our adjusting entry every time. Okay. Here's another example. We purchased finished furniture for 5120 This is our cost. January 1st, remember. We need to know if we had it for the full year. In this case, yes. If not, we have to prorate. We'll talk about that later. We don't need to because it's for the full year. It is estimated that the furniture will be used for 10 years. This is our useful life. And at the end of that time, our salvage value is $500. So what is the annual depreciation? Again, we know our formula is depreciation equals cost minus salvage value divided by useful life. Cost minus salvage value divided by useful life. So really here's our cost, here's our salvage value, and we estimated the useful life to be 10. So there, each year, depreciation will be $462. And therefore, the journal entry is going to be depreciation expense debit for this amount, furniture, and accumulated depreciation furniture credit for that amount. Okay, so now let's talk about that proration that we talked about, the depreciation for a partial year. Here's an example. Depreciation for a partial year. So this is what I've been talking about when I've been talking about prorating. We need to prorate. Sometimes an asset is used only for part of a year because you purchased it mid-year. This is most often the case. So let's look at an example. For example, you purchase a building. So it's your fixed asset. 
On May 1st, always, always, always look at the date. This is not for a full year, so you've only had a partial year. You need to prorate. Okay? It cost $120,000. There's our cost, and the building is expected to be used for 30 years. This is our useful life, after which it will be worth $30,000, which is our residual value. So we know our formula is cost minus residual value divided by useful life, which cost that's why 120,000 minus the residual value is 30,000 divided by 30 years. So what do we get here? When you take 120,000 minus 30,000, well, that's going to be 90,000 divided by 30 equals 3,000. So that would be our depreciation expense for the year. But we haven't had this for a year. We got this on May 1st. So we've had it for all of May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight months. So we've only had this for eight months. So now we have to go 3,000 divided by 12 months times eight is $2,000. So the first year, we can only depreciate this asset for $2,000. So our journal entry on December 31st is going to be depreciation expense for $2,000 and accumulated depreciation for $2,000. After that, the next year, December 31st, this was 2007, the next year in 2008 it's going to be depreciation expense for 30,000 because you've had it for the whole year and accumulated depreciation for $3,000 because this year you had it for the whole year and the first year we did not so we need to prorate it. Okay we've talked about net book value already in the first video but remember net book value equals cost minus accumulated depreciation. Okay, so I want you to try one by yourself. What is the depreciation expense in the first year for an automobile purchased? So here's your cost. With an estimated residual value, there's your residual value. Useful life of 10 years. The car was purchased on November 1st of the current year. We have not had it a whole year. What will the depreciation expense be year two? And what will the net book value be after the second year? So these are the kind of questions you're going to get. I want you to pause and try, think about it. So here's how I would handle the situation. Cost minus residual value divided by useful life. Okay, so our cost is 22,000. Our residual value is 2,000. And our useful life of 10 years, ignore the dollar sign. So once you get 22 minus 2 is going to be 20,000 divided by 10 equals $2,000. So that's our annual depreciation. But we haven't had it for the full year. We got it in November, so we've had it all of November and December. We've had it two months. So 2,000 divided by 12, because that's annual depreciation, times 2 equals, this is a little bit messy, 333.33 okay so this is going to be our first year but that's not the question the question what will the depreciation expense be year two well we know our depreciation expense every year is this two thousand dollars so that's going to be the answer to our question so two thousand dollars what is the net book value after the second year so what I'm going to teach you to do is make a table here so we have cost minus accumulated depreciation is our formula, right? Well, so let's do year one. So let's make a table here to make it easier for you. One, two, three, four. So we're going to have depreciation expense. We're going to have accumulated depreciation. And then I'm going to have net book value, okay? So the first year depreciation expense is 333.33 and accumulated depreciation is just every year 
the accumulation of it. Because this is our first year, our accumulated depreciation is going to equal our depreciation expense that year. So again, net book value is cost minus accumulated depreciation. Our cost was $22,000. So our net book value after our first year is going to be $21,666.67. But the question says, what is net book value after the second year? So we know that our depreciation expense is $2,000 every year because cost minus residual value divided by 10 is $2,000. This formula part we prorated, right, to get this partial first year. So every year after that, our depreciation expense is going to be $2,000 because we know we're going to have the assets for the full year. So in the second year, we depreciated it for $2,000. So $2,000 plus the first year's depreciation is going to be $2,333.33. That's how much we've accumulated. So it's going to be this plus that equals this every time. The next year is going to be 4,333.33 and so on. But the question is, what is the net book value after the second year? Well, remember it's cost minus accumulated depreciation. Our cost was $22,000. So $22,000 minus our accumulated depreciation in the second year equals 19666.67. So that would be the answer to our next question. I would always do a table. Okay, what would our, let's add another question here. What would be the adjusting entry for depreciation in year three? Year three adjustment. Remember the adjustment is the journal entry that we're actually doing all this work for. So it's gonna be December, 31st in year, we don't have years here, so year three we'll just put, year three. So always our adjusting entry is depreciation expense and accumulated depreciation, $2,000, because that's our depreciation expense. Just because the accumulated depreciation for that year is different than we put here, don't get confused. We're going for the expense and each year this accumulates. So it's the expense number that we're actually using. So depreciation expense is 2,000. We're gonna credit this account by 2,000, which is why we added 2,000. Now it's just getting bigger. By now, you should be able to calculate straight line depreciation. Calculate straight line depreciation for a partial year. This is prorating what we just did. When we take the first year depreciation expense divided by 12 times it by how many months you had, that's proration. Journalize or adjust for depreciation and calculate net book value. Cost minus accumulated depreciation. Hope that helped and we'll see you soon.